Continuing our one tool survival series, and this time we have a shovel. We're on the fringes of society, sticking with that theme. I'm right next to a road. There's a road right there. And I'm gonna be building a shelter right here into this hillside. At least that's my goal. I want it to be discreet. I want it to be basically invisible to the, uh, at least to the untrained eye. And we'll see uh, how long it's gonna take me. It depends on the soil conditions. So digging in dirt, digging holes around here is usually pretty miserable because of all the roots and the rocks. But hopefully I get lucky and miss most of those. Now, realistically, if we're looking at reality at all, will there ever be a situation where it's just me and my shovel and that's all I've got? Highly unlikely. But it is good to a good trial, a good test of your skills to challenge yourself, to, to limit yourself to the tools that you have at your disposal. If you've got all the gear, you're just camping, right? But in a, a real survival situation, there's you're going to be limited probably you're going to have disadvantages such as injuries or limited gear equipment that sort of thing so we're on the fringes of society i'm going to build a hidden shelter right here in this hillside i don't want to do it down here in the bottom i think for very obvious reasons you can see where it's recently rained and the water has washed down the hill there but i'm up elevated there it would have to be a biblical level flood to get the water that high up there so I think we're gonna be safe as far as rain goes, and I might dig myself a little, little diversion trench above it so I don't get washed out. Now, if I was doing this for real and I was forced to build some sort of shelter like this, I'd probably, probably do it during the daytime when there was more noise going on and I could actually see what I'm doing. There's some disadvantages and advantages to that, obviously, um, because the people are gonna be awake, they're gonna be listening for the noise. If the soil is soft enough, it makes almost no noise, but if there's rocks and stuff like that and you're having to chop roots, it's gonna make a bunch of racket. That's a thing. But there's also a whole lot of other noises going on during the day. Traffic noises are, are more, People are up doing things, working construction. I hear a weed eater in the distance, that kind of stuff. So that's gonna, that's gonna drown out my noise just a little bit. Once I had the shelter built and I was perhaps living in this thing, I would perhaps might be smart to switch to being a, a nocturnal creature coming out during the night and doing what you got to do, getting your water, all that stuff, and then sleeping during the day in this hole where no one's going to ever know you're there unless they step literally right on top of it. Even during the daytime, unless someone's actively looking for you, all you have to do if you're in a situation like this is stand still. So if a car is going by, people are walking by, just stop moving. Especially if you're wearing, you know, earth tone, type colors, camouflage. I wouldn't recommend camouflage for most situations because if you have to be out in the open, you're gonna kind of stick out like a sore thumb. If you are, camouflage is the worst thing <laughs> if you're uh, in society. So as far as blending in at least. But if you're wearing earth tones, if you just stand still, absolutely nobody will know you're here. If you're staying in the shady spots, if you're avoiding those areas that are the most obvious places where you might bed down, I think you're gonna be okay. Now, as I work out here, it's hot. Summertime in Georgia is hot. It's probably, I don't know, 85 degrees maybe. Thankfully, I'm in the shade, which is key. But I think, I mean, everybody wants to talk about hypothermia. But nobody really ever talks about hyperthermia, which is just as dangerous. And you've got to watch out for it, knowing the signs and symptoms of it. Obviously, you're just going to feel, feel terrible. You're going to feel really hot. You're going to... Um, have a racing heart, you know, you might get dizzy. Uh, all of these things are things you need to watch out for and need to cool off. Taking your time and pacing yourself is a big one. If you can cool off in some water, great idea, because right now I'm, I'm sweating, but the sweat's not doing much good because the humidity is so high. It just doesn't evaporate. It just, you just get wet and nasty. 
and that's the the dangerous part of a high humidity hot environment like this so taking your time slowing down a little bit and not getting overheated And I'm not trying to dig an eight foot deep hole or anything. I'm not trying to dig a grave. I'm just trying to make myself a ledge here. And that's the beauty of doing it in a hillside like this. Not only will it be probably drier because it's gonna drain better, but, but it's much easier digging. All right, we're looking pretty good. That's about big enough for me to lay down on. It needs some fine tuning. I might have to go a little bit deeper, but pretty close. I do have a Mylar blanket in my pocket, which I may or may not use for this video, depending on time, because the Mylar blanket's easy to carry and it makes an excellent shelter. But in an urban situation, suburban situation, you're gonna find trash, you're gonna find garbage bags, you're gonna find old, scrap trash like this actual metal roofing you're gonna find all kinds of garbage even cardboard boxes work really good if you do it right if you shingle them correctly a cardboard box can make a pretty rain tight uh, roof for you huh look at that <laughs> this was this was left out here on the property from geez maybe Two, three months ago? Coast, you make a solid headlamp. Good for you. <laughs> this is a small white pine. And around here, this is the best thing to use for any sort of natural bedding. It's the softest, it's the cushiest, it's just gonna be the best. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this entire tree right here and drag it back to camp, back to my campsite, and then process it there. I'm not gonna do any of that out here. And I'm gonna take this whole tree, I'm gonna cut it off as low as I can, and then disguise it so anybody that comes along is hopefully not gonna notice that I was here. A saw would be the thing here because you could cut it off. If you had a saw, you could cut this off right at ground level and then just put a couple leaves on top of it and you never notice it. So, um, But if you put some tension on it, you really bend it over. If you put lots of tension on the fibers of the plant, it doesn't take much to hack through it and you don't have to be hacking all day long. Just a couple of whacks and you could probably get through a tree of this size. Almost. So four whacks of the shovel, and I was able to get through a tree that's probably two, two and a half inches in diameter. Now I've got this stump to deal with here. If I wanted to disguise this thing, I would cut it off as low as I could, but that's gonna require more hacking and whacking. So I'm probably not gonna do that. What I would do is I would basically just take some of the dirt from their surrounding area, dirty it up, brown it up a little bit, cram that in there, that way it's just a whole lot less noticeable than it was before. And now I'm just gonna process the rest of this by hand. There's no need to chop anything. Everybody that takes a chopping type tool into the woods wants to use the chopping type tool, but really there's very little instances where you need to chop stuff. You can break things down just by hand firewood processing everybody wants to chop up their firewood in tiny little pieces don't do that don't waste your time don't waste the energy don't put yourself at risk for injury from that sharp thing that you're swinging around you can burn logs one by the end and just keep feeding them keep feeding them big long huge 20 foot long logs there's no need to chop them up into small pieces most of the time unless you're unless you're trying to put them in some sort of wood stove or something i'm just going to take the ends of my white pine branches and I'm gonna stick them in the dirt, like that. And I'm just gonna do this at random, random places. There's no kind of rhyme or reason. I'm just gonna cross these over 
and this is going to give me a really nice soft bed and I don't really necessarily need a really nice soft bed but it'll make make it much more comfortable and allow me to sleep a little bit more it'll insulate me from the ground not that I need it really this time of year I mean the cool ground is nice because at night this time of year it's it's pretty warm still I'd say if it gets in the 60s tonight I'd be I'd be surprised Oh yeah, not bad. So now what we gotta do is we gotta figure out how to cover ourselves, get some sort of protection from the elements and conceal our position a little bit better too. I mean, if it wasn't gonna rain, you could just lay right here, I suppose. And we're pretty hidden and just because we were careful about the site that we selected. We're down here in this kind of, this kind of wash and uh, this draw and no one can see you from up there the only place someone could see me is is if they were you know downstream of me right about there uphill no chance that direction i'm hidden by a hill as well so you'd have to be standing right on top basically before you could see this anybody know what that is to come in real handy if I want to have a fire. That's the stuff right there. We've got a basic framework here and for the sake of time and resources so i'm not chopping a whole bunch of trees i'm going to just use this mylar blanket that's in my pocket to car to give myself some protection from precipitation i've tried to knock off any sharp the thing about mylar blankets is they're pretty fragile if you're not real careful with them so i've tried to knock off any sharp little spikies that might potentially poke a hole in my mylar and rip it but i think I'm gonna see what I can do here. I don't have any cordage other than what is on my shovel. So I may end up tapping into that a little bit. This stuff is called ground pine. I'm sure it has other names too, but this stuff makes great bedding, which I could have used for my, my bed actually. Still could add some to it, but I think I might throw this stuff on top of the mylar to help hold it in place and disguise it. Sounds like they're painting the uh, lines on the road behind me. Yep. So that's what I'm talking about. I mean, there's no possible way those guys saw me. I'm sitting here perfectly still. Not wearing camouflage, but I'm wearing earth tones. And even if they were looking for me, it'd be difficult, even though I'm right here in the open. I'm right here in the open. I'm not concealed really in any way other than I'm in the shadows and I'm back in the woods little ways. There's nothing in front of me, nothing between me and them. And they probably still didn't see me. Just stop moving, hold still, be quiet. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. Camouflage 101. All right, since I've got limited amount of cordage, I'm gonna disassemble this paracord and take some of those inner strands out. ball it up like that then that'd be big just something small and then since mylar is so fragile I'm gonna double the mylar over 
like that. Stick the leaf in that doubled up spot and then make myself a little ball. And then I'll just take the cordage that I've got here and I'll just make myself a loop in a loop. Stick this part through and then the button through that slip loop right there. And that'll lock it down and then I can stake it out. Whew, it's a hot one. Do you want to know the most annoying sound in the world? It's not Jim Carrey. It is uh, the mosquitoes in your ear. Man, it's uh, hard to block it out sometimes. You got to find your happy place. Hey guys, if you like these kind of videos, I mean, who doesn't? Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up, subscribe, and if you haven't done so already, leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you would do different. Tell me if this is something that, that's realistic. So tell me if this is just pure fantasy and we're just out here having a good time. Let me know. It is steamy. I tell you what though, I, I think I prefer the heat over the cold. I don't know, it's hard to decide. You got bugs and stuff to deal with in the heat, but it's nice to be able to jump in the water, cool off. When it's cold, it's just cold. You got to bundle up and I don't know. What do you think? What's worse? What's the worst? What's harder to deal with in a wilderness type setting or I guess not wilderness, but this type of setting? What's tougher, the cold or the heat? What's more miserable? <laughs> we are attempting to stick to the basic rules, right? Um, we're not on the path of least resistance. We're not on a, on a road, we're not on a trail, we're not anything like that. So we're off of the road far enough to where we will be out of sight most likely. Um, we want our shelter to blend in. We want it to be low to the ground. We want it to be irregular in shape. We want it to be secluded and we don't want it to be shiny at all. So right now you can tell me, tell me in the comments, which one of those rules we are breaking right now. <laughs> uh, well, we're breaking a couple of them, I guess, at the moment. So you can tell me which ones we're breaking. Because of the location that we've selected, it's still gonna be tough to see. There we are, that's uh, 20 yards at most away, 15 yards. There it is, see it? This is the road. This is this is the path of least resistance right here. This is where everyone's going to be, whether you're driving, bicycling, walking, whatever it is, everyone's gonna be following the roads for the most part. No one's gonna be walking through the thick, thick brush unless they know what they're doing, obviously. So where's our shelter? Where is it? It's completely gone. So from the road, even way up high, let's get up here. gone it's over there somewhere but impossible to see from the road as shiny and you know obnoxious as that mylar blanket is it's still if you pick a good spot you're not going to see it Now, if you were gathering materials like this, it would be smart to gather them far from where you're actually making your camp and then haul them to the place. You gotta be realistic though, depending on the situation, how sneaky do you need to be, I guess? That's the question, I suppose. So like, for example, there was someone that parked right here. They're working on the road up here and they parked Right there, this is my property by the way, full disclosure, I'm not trespassing. By the way, it would be a smart idea to not trespass just in general, regardless of the scenario, SHTF or whatever. Um, it'd be best to do this on some sort of public land, you know. If you're trespassing on private property, 
people frown upon that good times and the bad so your call on that one but anyway there was somebody parked right here right there and they had absolutely no idea that there was some weirdo down here building a camouflage hooch in the hillside <laughs> uh, what a weird job what a weird job that i have created for myself anyway this is pretty much done i mean i think you guys get the point so I've even taken steps to conceal the, the dirt that I've disturbed. And I've covered it up with some pine straw. I think you can see how well that blends in and I could keep working on it. I mean, I don't have to stop. I mean, I could, I could keep, you know, perfecting it and manicuring each little spot and make sure it perfectly blends in. But I think you guys get the gist of what, what's going on here. So this, let's back off a little bit and take a look at it. You saw the before of what it looked like before we camouflaged it. And now let's take a look at it from the same places. There's our hooch. I can see those sticks sticking out in kind of straight lines, like evenly spaced. That's something that we could fix. Here we are, there's the road. There's our shelter, a little bit of sunshine shining on it, but not much we could do about that. But even, I mean, even if you walked right, right by this, there, you'd have no idea that some dude was sleeping in there during the day. My, my entrance hole is awfully small. I might have to work on that a little bit. I mean, I can get in there, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be interesting. <laughs> I left all this open, all that open on purpose because it's summertime and it's freaking hot. And without any ventilation, man, it's just going to be miserable inside of an underground shelter like this. Oh, yeah. It's actually not bad once you're in. I can, I can roll over on my side, um, no problem. I can, I can stretch my legs completely out which is nice. That's always something I'd recommend if you're building any kind of shelters, just make sure you make it big enough where you can stretch out. So I can, I can roll around, lay on my back, lay on my stomach, lay on my side. I generally sleep on my side, especially on shelters like this. And especially if it's cold, because you have less surface area touching the ground. But I can cover myself up like this, camouflage myself, and then just disappear. Here, let's see if I can get you. Come here, come here you. Come on in. Come on in, friends. So here we are inside our dugout shelter. Cozy as all get out. And it's actually really nice in here. There's, It's cool, much cooler than it is outside. And I can feel a little bit of breeze because I've left three sides of this shelter open. So that's that's perfect. That's That's all you could really ask for. And like I said, I can roll around. I could sleep on my side and have plenty of room to do what, what I need to do. And if it should rain, I'm gonna stay dry because the Mylar is 100% waterproof. Now there's a possibility of a little bit of water creeping in down this side right here. And now what I could do to mitigate that is build myself some sort of trench up top and then conceal it just with some loose like pine needles or something like that. So, and then pack down the trench on the inside so the water will flow out. So I might do that because um, I don't want to end up in a puddle. I could raise this bed up a little bit, but then I'm losing real estate inside. So I probably don't want to do that. I would just have had to have dug this deeper if, if I was going to build a raised bed of sorts. And a raised bed is a good idea in a swampy, wet environment because it just keeps you up off of the wet ground. Now, fire is something else. The fire is an important thing for a lot of reasons. Let's say I needed to dry my clothes out. Let's say I needed to cook something, purify my water, whatever. Fire is a big deal. But under these circumstances, potentially you don't wanna have a fire because people will see the fire. There's ways around that, Dakota fire holes and all that stuff, which I thought about doing next to the shelter, actually inside the shelter, which would have been cool, but not very realistic. So um, people will see this, they'll see the smoke, smell the smoke. Uh, hear stuff crackling, hear you collecting the firewood, all that stuff. So you got to be really cautious if you if you do want to have a fire 
what I would suggest is if you're going to have a fire, start the fire, do what you need to do with it and put it out immediately and do it far from your actual place where you're going to be sleeping. You'll want to use as dry of wood as possible because it's going to catch on fire the fastest, obviously. But it's also going to smoke the least. So on this series, we are attempting survival using nothing but our shovel. And we are on the outskirts of civilization in our urban, suburban type area. Houses all over the place, road right behind me there's uh and i'm using just this shovel to accomplish all of my goals now i'm cheating just a little bit i've used some cordage that was wrapped around the ed the uh the handle of my shovel here and i'm also going to cheat again because a friction fire with a shovel while it is possible and i've done it there's a video on my channel on three using just this shovel right here to start a fire to create a bow drill fire basically but it's a huge time suck. It takes forever. So I'm going to cheat again because I've got a little fire starter taped to the sheath of my shovel right there. There's lots of different ways to do this. There's some textbook ways to do it and there's some get her done type ways of doing it. I've done this in a hillside before. That's pretty easy. I've done it in uh, where, where a tree has fallen over and I've done it in that, in that hole that's been created by that and that works really well. But here is a hole that's already kind of done for me. This is where a tree had fallen over and left a hole in the ground. I'm gonna utilize this already existing hole here for my Dakota hole. Perfect. Ooh, some nice bait too. I've got this hole about a shovel deep, which is, I don't know, let's call that 18, 20 inches maybe. I'm gonna move away from this hole about half a shovel or so, give or take. So there's my two holes. This is where my fire is gonna go. There's a little hole, chimney hole, going over here. That's gonna allow the fire to breathe and smoke less. You'll wanna use the smallest, driest twigs that you can possibly find to get your fire going. And you'll also wanna make a, a bed, uh, a fire lay in the bottom, something dry with kind of really small, like medium sized sticks, I would say, finger sized sticks in the bottom. So your, your fire is not touching the wet, cold dirt on the bottom of the hole. Our Lincoln Log stacked kindling down here on the bottom that's gonna keep our fire, our baby little fire, from touching any of the moist soil as it's trying to grow. And that will keep it from smoking. Here's our cedar bark tender bundle. And then we're gonna dig in to our fire starter that is underneath the tape right here. It's just a small ferro rod with a ceramic striker. Now it's gonna smoke at first. I mean, there's not really, there's not a whole lot you can do about it once it, when you're first starting the fire. But as soon as it gets lit up and it starts going, the smoke, if it's dry wood, it'll go away just about immediately. And if you've done your part, if you've done a good job of, of venting it, see that? If you've done a good job of venting it, it'll feed good oxygen to it and it won't smoke very much.
our fire is burning really good now. It's venting really well. You can see the air just being pulled from this direction through and up out through the through the, the bottom of the fire, feeding those hot coals in the bottom. Almost no smoke coming off this fire. The reason a fire smokes is one, because it's, it, it has moisture in it, or two, because it's burning inefficiently. And a Dakota fire hole burns very, very efficiently. All right, so there's our fire. The flames are just barely coming up above the, the ground right there. And if I was diligent about managing it, I would make sure that those flames stayed nice and low. And I would just steadily feed small dry sticks in there until I finished doing whatever it is I was doing. I finished my cooking, uh, boiling my water, I don't know, dancing around the fire, whatever it is that I had planned on doing. I'd finish doing that as quickly as possible. And then I would snuff this fire out and I would do it as simply as this. Lots of heat coming off that right there. You could definitely cook over that fire for sure with no issues whatsoever. We're gonna make the fire go away in a hurry. We gotta get out of here fast for whatever reason. We gotta go or we just wanna not stick around in one spot for too long because we're paranoid about something. This is how easy it is to put out your fire. And I know some people are gonna say, oh, you're, you're insulating hot coals and they're gonna spark back to life. This is wet soil that I'm burying this in. It is not gonna come back to life, I promise you. There will be no fire here. In just a couple minutes, there was no fire there. We were never here. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. We will check on the water, maybe catch something to eat on the next video. Uh, who knows what else we're gonna get into. Food, fire, water, and shelter. We've done shelter, we've got fire. We just need to do water and some sort of food, hopefully. We'll see what we can come up with. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. See you tomorrow.